Hey folks, it's Dave Isaacs, and I have not posted a practicing video in quite some time. So I like to make these as informal as possible, so with that in mind, I'm sitting out here in my carport, and so the shades are not for a look, it's bright and I can't, I'll be squinting at you otherwise. And I'm just sitting here with my nylon string guitar and kind of doing my morning warm-ups, and I have not played much on this instrument in the last couple of weeks. Just been all kinds of things going on. Not so much time for the kind of concentrated practice that I really do like to do and is really a great way to start the day. So I have a few go-to things that I do, but I tend to start, and I've mentioned this before, with a single note. And all I'm doing is touching the string and my whole way of thinking about guitar playing has been shifting in the sense that instead of thinking about hand position and all of this other stuff, where is this, where is that, which is important and has its place, but what I'm thinking about right now is just, where's the string, what does it feel like? That there is tactile feedback. I touch the string and what I do to it depends of course on the sound I'm trying to get, but the energy I put into the string is also depending on what I feel, the level of resistance I feel from the string. And then I want to practice the stroke. So what I will often do is start off by essentially whispering, playing very, very softly just to feel the movement and the contact, and then start applying Then from there, one might move to a scale, or I actually like to start with a simple arpeggio. Say something like a two finger A minor. So I've got my index on C here, second string, first fret, my middle finger on A, third string, second fret. Yes, this is how real it is. There are flies landing on my arm because it's Tennessee in July. So I've got my two fingers on this A minor. I am super light. I am just looking for, I mentioned the tactile feedback, the sensation of these two fingers in contact with the string with zero pressure. My thumb is in contact behind the neck, but I'm not pushing. The pad of my thumb is simply touching and I'm looking at it as a spatial reference. It's a balance point. This thing of sensation and tactile feedback leads us into what I think is the primary thing about control of technique, which is balance. You have to think of your fingers as being like a dancer's feet. That every time you come in contact, you have to keep your balance, stick the landing, but maintain your movement towards the next thing. And we're doing it with all these fingers. But think about a dancer's body awareness of, for example, how your foot lands. So I'm doing that with my finger. I'm just putting my attention into it. What does it feel like when I roll back and forth across this simple arpeggio? And then I'm going to start adding a pattern. You see I'm headed somewhere, so those of you who are saying, well, this is so, how can you do something so tedious? And I am paying very close attention to what this feels like. Again, I am still whispering. I'm playing very softly and just getting the flow going. And as I said, I have some go-to classical things that I warm up with. So one of them, uh, these are actually both Carcassi etudes, but this one goes like this. And I miss, see? I'm not doing this to show you how perfect I am. And again, still whispering, just finding the string. I'm not trying to create a lot of sound yet. But what I am trying to do is get more flow and a consistent sense of accuracy. Did you hear me? bobble that E, so let's still whisper. Now, I know this very well. I mean, my left hand has definitely learned the forms. I know where to go, but I don't play it perfectly every time unless 
when I sit down and start like this and work my way up, then when I'm good and warmed up, I will play it a lot more accurately. I'm not gonna say I'm 100% accurate after I do that, but I can say that I can have an impact on the degree of my accuracy and the degree of control that I feel. And so I just wanted to show you that. And I'm gonna wrap up with a little scale study. This is also more Carcassi. You don't have to play classical to understand this idea. What I want you to see is the way that I'm gradually introducing movements bit by bit. And basically every time I add something, it's involving a little bit more movement because an arpeggio study has movement in the picking hand, but the left hand is static. And so I can practice just contact and float in this hand while I'm repeating a cycle in the other hand. But when I go to something like this, now everything goes together. See the fumbles there. So that meant I lost my sensation of where the fingertip was as I moved down across the neck. So. fingertips better but you see that wasn't quite as controlled so I shouldn't be going that fast yet and maybe I need to zero in that's not bad that's where it gets clunky it's my middle finger reaching this note so let's see Focus on that spot, make sure I stick that landing. I get the note and then a little shift into the rest strokes. Oops. Oh, I gotta start with my middle finger because that matters in terms of the sequence of alternation. There's so many little details here. And uh, some of you have seen me, my usual reaction to the word tedious, <laughs> because this is detailed work. And I think the bottom line is someone who finds detailed work tedious is going to have a hard time perfecting anything, unless you have such flow to start with. I'm not saying I do it for long, so this video has been going on for seven minutes and 30 seconds. Um, I did some warming up here before I actually started the video, so at least I'm in somewhat control with my fingers. But, I mean, all told, maybe I spend 10 minutes on this, and then I'm probably gonna put the guitar down. I'm not even gonna go to something else right away. I am just, this is my morning check-in, my morning touch the instrument, just start to feel my way. And, you know, I've been playing the guitar for 40 years. It's not like the muscle memory isn't there. But by starting my day with that light check-in, it just tunes me in in a way that I wouldn't be otherwise. And I find that as things flow, I play better, I'm more connected, I have better control. And when I do this every day, I play better. And when I don't do it every day, I'm a little bit more sloppy. It's an ongoing process that never ends, but it takes me back to what I've always been saying about practicing, which is that it is a process. And so if you spend 10 minutes in that process in the morning, you don't need to do an hour of scales to have an impact on your degree of control. It's that focusing. Forget about some of the things you've learned in the past about how you learn. Yes, the repetition matters. Of course the repetition matters, but that's why you're gonna do it every day for short periods of time because you can concentrate. And on days where you can go longer and you can concentrate more, beautiful, do that. But be aware of your degree of concentration. And when your mind starts going, this is boring, you're either going to refocus and say, this is what I need to be concentrating on and that thought will not happen. Or you say, maybe this is not where my mind is right now. Let me see what my fingers, A, either wanna do, or B, I know they are not doing what I want them to, and so I'm gonna zero in on this and spend some time with the microscope and see what's really going on. So when I say the microscope, for example, I have to find this F sharp, C, because I missed it, because I'm talking, but I have to pay attention to it. 
that doesn't mean that I'm thinking my way through the entire thing. I am feeling my way through it, but I need to remember that there's a trouble spot there I need to watch out for. It's just being conscious. It's just paying attention and taking the time to say, hello hands, hello guitar. And, you know, I appreciate that the Nashville guitar guru thing can sound like shtick when I start talking about awareness, and touch and feel and all of those things, but I'm talking about the body and contact and, you know, there is actually nothing more concrete than being present in your body. If that sounds woo-woo to you, it is time to start paying attention. And the thing is, the thing that's so amazing, is that when you do practice these things, you will have to practice getting into the state of flow as well. I did a performance yesterday. I haven't done a whole lot of playing in front of people for, for quite a while. So getting up and even playing through whole songs, I felt like, geez, my groove is rusty because I haven't been used to feeling the pocket. You have to go through the flow. So once you've done that detailed stuff, at some point, and I wouldn't recommend it necessarily with a classical piece like this, although, you know, you do want to see, okay, where's my speed ceiling now? Where have I gotten to? How smoothly can I really play this? But you have to practice performance. And when you do that, you do develop the ability to just absorb all that detailed stuff you had to think about when you had the microscope out. Whoops. This is how informal I am. I've got my cheap little Walmart phone stand as I'm sitting here in the carport and you can hear uh, birds and insects buzzing and stuff because I like starting my day like this outside. Thank you for watching. I hope you find this interesting, illuminating, entertaining, and you see what I mean about the squinting, but signing off. See you next time.